All right, welcome to Lights, Camera, Barstool Special Review Edition. Today, we are reviewing the the much anticipated and are already much aligned Joker Two Fwa Adu. Fuck that! Fuck that time to have this what I, this. Level what did I, I? I called it something. Go ahead. I I gotta look how poopy a poo. Poopy. It, <laughs> it's what it should have been called. It's such a pretentious title for what is a movie that I think all three of us have. Mostly negative thoughts on. Uh, obviously, Jeff on uh, to talk about one of the bigger movies. Of the year. We could also touch on Megalopolis, um, which you hadn't talked about yet, and um, uh, Wild Robot as well, uh, and among other things too. But before that, we do have a couple news items. The first being one of the more interesting headlines just this morning that you had, you had texted to us actually. Uh, Francis Ford Coppola had to come out and give us his thoughts on AI and uh, was an Instagram AMA. Yeah, the, the, I highly recommend if you just have 30 minutes to kill and want to like read the ramblings of yeah. a very uh, old hippie, uh, just head to Francis Ford Coppola's Instagram. He did an AMA last night, and I'm 100% convinced that he does run his own Instagram because of this. He said, I have very strange thoughts about AI. It has to do with my own opinion of what consciousness is. I believe if you reach a certain critical mass of computational ability, it should be interlinked with a certain critical mass of chemical ability, and this is an entity entirety were encompassed by language it would burst into consciousness just fucking shut up dude like what are you trying to say here this sounds like the this sounds like cut a uh, cut piece from the script of megalopolis yeah it honestly sounds like chat gpt ironically he um he did i always forget the name of it he does he was like the hundredth person in the uh what's it called it's like the french france version of criterion um eureka they, they 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 do like the the closet. It's in France. Fuck, what is it? Um, I thought they were all out of the closet in France. God, he's like in a big DVD closet. I forget what it's called. Um, oh, Combini, Combini. It's probably some French name. Mm -hmm. They have really good. So they 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 take him through a big DVD closet. It's like ten times the size of the Criterion closet. Christopher Nolan one's great. They're all good. They're long. They're like thirty minutes long. And his is good. He 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 posted. He talks about meeting all these old directors. Talks about him and George Lucas like helping out Kurosawa after he got fired on an American project. But if you watch that video, ooh, is this man a perv? <laughs> this man, he loves the ladies. Everything oh, is yeah. like, ooh, yeah, there's some good-looking ladies in this one. Ooh, yeah, this movie has a lot of good-looking ladies. It's like, okay, Jerry. It's like, all right, okay, okay, Francis, we get it. You like you like the hot ladies. Yeah. Then he's like, did some other old director talk to him? He's like, I can't tell you what he told us, but uh, it was about the ladies. It's like, oh, this man, this man loves the ladies. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, France is perfect for that. They love anyone who does not view women as equal <laughs> to, to men and legally or otherwise uh, over in France. He's just, he's just Italian. He's just Italian. He is probably the, he's like among the, the power rankings of Italians in the entertainment industry. He might be like number one. He's up there. Tim and Marty. Scorsese uh, probably is number one. Yeah. Yeah. But the uh, Godfather is like the number one Italian thing. Pacino. Yeah. He lost some points when he teamed up with Duncan, though. And now Italian. Italian doesn't fuck with Duncan. Italians don't fuck with De Niro anymore. <laughs> they, 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 that was, what do they call it? Trump derangement syndrome or whatever? Oh, I thought it was because he filmed The Irishman. Maybe that, too. <laughs> yeah, a combination of both. Uh, and Francis Ford Coppola also said he's working on two new more movies. Um, maybe give it a break. Yeah, probably a good idea to not end on this one. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That part is true. I know Gooch. Gooch seems to have liked it, but it's... it's... <laughs> I want Megalopolis, too. <laughs> <laughs> you, your your review I, I, look, I'll never I, I'll never say well I guess I did I said this with, with Stephen Che I said he didn't actually like uh, Unfrosted um, I read your review and I don't think you liked the movie I do think I liked it I'm so I, at the end you're like you're like I may not like this tomorrow or like in a week I was like I don't know if you like do you like the movie listen there was a period a couple days afterwards where I was like I don't know if I liked it I'm back in on it I'm all the way back in. I'm thinking about Very, raising my score. <laughs> so I gave it a 57. I don't really like it. I I definitely... I was talking to Kirk about it. Kirk and I were supposed, we were supposed to see it in oh, Chicago, yeah. but it wasn't out in like a certain theater. We weren't able to see it. it. Whatever. Long story short, I ended up seeing it not like the other day when I was back home in California. And I did say I was like... I was I was engaged the whole way through. But I was very excited to see it. So that's a very un that's not like a very fair way to judge. Like I wouldn't suggest to someone be like, hey, I loved it the whole time. I mean, we've been talking about this movie for months. Mm -hmm. Like everything about this was so funny. That's why I was engaged by it. I thought it was so I thought it was beyond comprehend. Like 
incoherent movies can be good sometimes, and even like like Babylon, right? Babylon is like scattershot nonsense at times, but like I can get liking it, and I guess I can get liking Megalopolis in a ways. But this was incoherent beyond like repair for me. But dude, and think about the big boner. <laughs> spo- well, yeah, spoiler alert: the the pause for spoilers. The fucking bow and arrow thing is the worst scene I've seen. It's <laughs> the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> John Voight was better in Reagan than he was in this movie. Uh, I know you guys haven't seen Reagan no, yet. Reagan, dude. an unbelievable cinematic achievement. I haven't seen it, but would, I mean, come on. John Voight acting like he's at a WWE show when they're at, yeah. when they're at the circus. He's like, yeah. Go back to the club. I fucking he, I, I keep seeing the clip. It, it's just, I, I yeah, that, that movie, it, it was, I, I really hated that movie. I, it's not one of the worst of the year. Like, I definitely, Kendrick, I, I, your review, I agree completely. I think the way some people describe this movie, it was like bottom of the barrel, like single digit out of a hunt. Like, it wasn't anywhere near that bad. No. And there's some stuff in this movie that looked great, too. There was some, there was some like rolling zooms and like, like, like rolling like focus shots that looked really good. Um, like, I, I loved some of what I saw, but overall, I just, it was like, what the fuck? Yeah. I, I, I saw it, I, I saw it early in the day. Matt and I early in the day in Huntington Beach, that's like prime time for olds. And so I thought there'd be more people. There's only one person showed up. Five minutes late, they left halfway through. So I ended up mm-hmm. I did end up finishing it the only person in it. But Coward. I liked it better than Joker, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, me too. I think that I think that's probably the prevailing thought here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No Joker. <laughs> Katie Katie Stats just came up to us and was asking like about what she should see. And I think we were both in agreement. Like, if you're going to go to the movies, like, Joker 2, will just, I don't know who to recommend. We'll talk about Joker 2. I go, go see two. Wild Robot. I've yeah. seen either. Go yeah. see Wild Robot. Exactly. Megalopolis is at least, like, an entertaining time at the theater. Yeah. And, he, and I, I respect that it's it's a vision. I think it's... Also, the other thing you said, Kendrick, you nailed, too, is this is a movie that would have... This movie would have ripped 40 oh, years ago. Yeah. 30, 40 years ago, this is, like, the most, like, influential, like, inspirational whatever movie, like, zeitgeist movie ever made. Now it's just kind of... Just too late. The 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 problem is that it's like it's also set in present day. Yeah. Like technology wise. So then like the futuristic thing is like it's like just like the gobbly goop. It's like yeah. just like it's like blah. Like it's here's like lines and curves and like colors. Like this is the future, which it just doesn't work because it's like it's a, they the Disney calls it the Tomorrowland problem where Tomorrowland will never be work because it'll always be outdated at some point or another and it just doesn't look futuristic that was the problem with this movie but yeah we said we were that's talking my about quick thoughts on megalopolis probably the last point he could have made this and would have worked was um the turn into the 2000s which he tried to do and then he was casting in 2001 and 9 11 happened and he just couldn't which do it. by the way i don't know if you guys saw that story there is never before seen footage of 9 11 in megalopolis because they were fucking filming in new york city they're doing Preliminary oh, shooting shots, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and they have so that montage at the very end. That shot of nine yeah. eleven is exclusive to Francis Ford. <laughs> it is cra- that. just crazy. Uh, next news items: We had a Paddington three trailer come out. Paddington in Peru brings Paddington's story back to Peru as he uh, the Browns visit his beloved Aunt Lucy. Um, Paddington just like a generally pretty nice movie. I think uh, getting out of the dregs of London will be probably good for it, uh, and they're delightful, great movies for family, kids, whatever. I think it's good good to have more Paddingtons. Yeah, no. Yeah, everyone likes Paddington, right? Yeah. yeah. I rewatched uh, both of them pretty recently. And yeah. yeah, they're just very delightful. I'm a little adventure looking for El Dorado. Like, that. that's cool. Yeah. I'm shocked by how much 2 was still very good, com- even comparable to 1. Because it's like, oh, it's like a flash in the pan little kids movie. But, like, 2 was very good. Oh, people treat 2 like it's because of the Rotten Tomatoes thing. People yeah. treat 2 like it's the like pinnacle of it's children's so good, movie. Yeah. I won't go that far. But it is just, that's a movie I can recommend to anyone. Uh, a kids movie you probably won't recommend anyone. Live action Rugrats movie in development at Paramount Plus. I don't oh. know. I don't know who who thought that this was something that anybody would be interested in. Like, it's like you're trying to grip at like a couple of different audiences, right? Like, you want like the millennials that are having kids, so that you can kind of grip like them and their kids, uh, and you want like the CGI to be like kind of update it. But fuck, man, that's everything about this is gross. The, I mean. The, Babies in movies are disgusting. <laughs> like, what is it gonna like? What is it? Is it gonna be like baby geniuses, like CGI big baby or whatever? The big what was the baby that Tommy Pickles hated? It was Big Baby, right? The really creepy looking one. Yeah, or is it gonna be like? It's gonna be like Lion King live action, where it's like they're all like, but that oh. would be oof. That would be weird. That's like Uncanny Valley weird. Mm-hmm. I mean, like the baby from um, uh, the Flash, maybe. 
the ones that like, right. are thrown out the window. I think that's oh, this oh no. <laughs> this is like yeah, I don't, I don't like this. That's a disaster. Love the Rugrats too. Par- Great show. Paramount Plus sneakily puts out some like good TV shows. It sucks to think that like they're gonna have to like cut some of that to make a Rugrats live action movie. That's a big bummer. They should. You think they can find a baby? They can just learn the lines. Is that how old do you have to be to know words? Like two. Two. I think. They could probably pull it off with a little de-aging, cast a three-year-old. Yeah, you can figure it out. In <laughs> uh, another uh, trailer that came out, and this one is just kind of interesting to me, the trailer for the Robbie Williams biopic, Better Man, where he's played by an ape. This trailer made me feel stupid because I have no idea who the fuck Robbie Williams is. Me neither. Who is this guy that he's getting like a full giant CGI ape biopic? I think he's popular across the pond, but does not have reach into the U.S. I never even heard of him. Also, what's happening with biopics now being, like, not by bio- like the the Pharrell one? He's Lego. Yeah, I kind of like it. I, I it's it, it's at least unique, I guess. I don't even know. I, I you go through Robbie Williams' wiki, and he's like, yeah, look at all these songs. Angels, Millennium. She's the, like. She's- I mean, I I know his songs. I just didn't. I didn't expect like. Then again, one of the best movies of this year. Kneecap is also, mm-hmm. you know, I, I wouldn't have said I would have known a lot of, like, their music. That's um, true. But that's almost so, like, that's so much more grounded than someone getting a right. CGI ape movie. <laughs> right, right. Or Chimp or whatever it was. That's fucking crazy to me. The fact that Wade is doing it, too. Yeah. Like, how, how the hell did they pull that one off? I just love them. Uh, well, in all the former territories, I guess. Uh, they had the trailer for Juror Number 2 uh, come out, which actually looks kind of awesome. Uh, family man Justin Kemp, who, while serving as a juror in a high-profile murder trial, finds himself struggling with a serious moral dilemma when he could use to sway the jury uh, verdict and predict potentially convict or free the wrong killer. Directed by Clint Eastwood, uh, it has Nicholas Holt, Zoe Deutsch, J.K. Simmons, Tony Collette, Kiefer Sutherland, Leslie Bibb. Uh, great crew. Uh, the, the trailer looked awesome. Like a guy thinks he may have actually been the one to kill someone that he's on trial for uh and he's on trial trying to convict that uh the, that person's boyfriend looked really interesting i think this is getting clint eastwood out of the cry macho whatever funk and back into like something like this where he's not starring in it too i love that and uh very interested to see this yeah i mean i'm not a fan of the mule for example yeah didn't, didn't really like the mule richard jewel movie was fine yeah solid movie nothing crazy though um this looked good. This is also one of the best vague trailers I've seen in a long time. Like, you understand what they're getting at, but it's like, you know, it leaves a little above to your imagination, like, what could happen here? Great cast. I'm not going to say it's a slam dunk. It's going to be good. I mean, Ethan's had some stinkers, not even stinkers, like just bland movies, but I, I, have, I have nothing negative to say about this. Like, I, I think this could be very good. Yeah. Yeah, more than anything, I just want Clint to just keep making movies. Yeah. Selfishly, I hope he does it till the day he dies, which... 94? It'd be great if this was really good and this like like right now the Oscar race is not great. It's yeah. it's very very like thin right now in terms of what we've seen. I know you just saw Nora. Yeah, that's which I'm very be, excited to see. That, that's gonna be a powerhouse. Sing Sing was very good. Yes. Um, I see the Brutalist in two weeks. That one also has different man getting a lot of hype. But I don't know. Dune two still has a legitimate shot to win this, and Dune two is gonna have a disgusting push from Warner Brothers. They are going to push every dollar behind that movie trying to win best pick so it's like there's a couple things and then like everything else like we haven't really seen it like 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 gladiator 2 remains like in people's top 10 i just don't believe that no that looks Um, every trailer i see of it i think it's gonna suck more is it just me or does pedro or not pedro pascal uh what's the fuck paul mescal look like drunk in every scene in it yeah, well, he looks like like really messed up. Yeah, like he's like trying to do like a twisted sort of performance or something. I don't get it. Twisted. Even like the movie yeah. Blitz, which is supposed to be really good, and yeah. like maybe Sir Sharon is going to finally win an Oscar. Like Steve McQueen. Yeah. I know that got a poster recently, but I have, is there a tra- there's not a trailer out for that, right? I think there was a teaser. Wait, this the the one where she's well, a, a coming out of rehab. The, the World War Two one, right? It's like is there like a full on trailer for that? I thought there was at least a teaser. I know maybe she, there is. She but, has a movie releasing like today. Stuff yeah, like so that. she has a movie called um, like shit. Outrun? I just outrun, outrun. Yeah, it's out. It's out wide. I think next. I'm very excited to see that. But Blitz is the one with Steve McQueen. Maybe there is a trailer and I missed it. Um, but that's the World War II movie. Yes, during the Blitz, um, Conclave yeah. is also getting a lot of hype. Yes, which I don't know if I believe that yet. Ray but Fiennes. Well, Ray Fiennes in, in a fancy Pope outfit. Who's not? Yeah, who's not gonna, oh, there, I there, there, there was there, there was a Blitz trailer. I did watch yeah. it. That's right. There was yeah. a Blitz trailer. But still, like, it came out like a week ago, and that's like, in many people's top five to win, 
best picture or be nominated. It's like we've only seen a trailer for a week. It's like so I mean many of these things are we just I know that's like that's not out of the norm, but this year compared to the last year, it's like the the race is still pretty thin in terms of like what we know is gonna be up there for nominees. So. What was the the swimming lesbians movie that kept getting nominated Nyad. for everything last year? Nyad. I was gonna say Nyquist. Fucking Nyad. What a terrible movie. <laughs> it was such a bore, dude. Uh, and then lastly on news, just one we got to throw in there. Uh, 11 people walked out of an opening screening for Terrifier 3 last night with one audience member also being sick. Uh, I tweeted it yesterday. I still believe it. If these movies, specifically at least the second one, they stink. And I truly believe that if you are like a diehard fan of these movies, like you are a freak, like a bad, very bad type of freak. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. It's disgusting. I, mean, I just don't understand. Like. My my thing is, like I I know like body horror and like shock and gore and all that shit is what people like sometimes, but this is this is so over the top gross to be gross. So I just think it's so inauthentic and like what I know there's an audience for this, but I, I I think it shit sucks. I think it's people that are too afraid to look at live leak or something. You know what I mean? It's like people who they really just want to see truly gross fucked up things, and they're like. Well, I'm not that gross. I'll watch something that looks one for one exactly like this thing happening, but I don't want to watch that. It really, I don't get it at all. I got another bone to pick too, by the way. The, I'll say that they're calling him a horror legend, by the way. <laughs> not a horror legend. Fucking whatever. What's his name? I don't even remember. Fight me, Art. Artie Fight me, Art the Clown. Yeah, Art the <laughs> Clown. Yeah. Um, but horror movies the past like three years have decided to implement this new marketing strategy where they're like, oh my fucking god, you know how many people walked out of our yeah. fucking showing? Five people walked. Five people in the first ten minutes walked out of our showing, and then ten more walked out halfway through. Mm-hmm. And there was only fifteen people invited, so everyone walked out of our fucking movie. They were puking their guts out. Come see it. <laughs> it's just like fuck you, fuck you. I hate. I I truly just I don't get these movies at all. But it's it's whatever. Shout out to Art the Clown. I guess you got your audience. Um, and then really quickly, just to t- to touch on two things. Uh, Lord of the Rings: Rings of Power wrapped up. Um, a good final episode, I thought. Uh, no, it had a lot of good throwbacks to the movies, uh, and I think they did a good job of like um, doing it tastefully and also showing off like the how, how, So actually, I have not watched it yet. Me so either. how big is the tie-in to the movies? Like last year, obviously had a pretty big, had some like massive moments that were like, okay, we I'd, know this shit. I would say more, more. It's way more tie-in in this finale, the season finale, okay. than the last season finale, and like that part's cool. The rest of it's just kind of like, okay. I would say uh, this season okay. has been a lot of we talk about a lot. A lot of the meat of the sim, which is very boring. A lot of like Heron Hall and Game of Thrones season two, which is you're just stuck in one spot, not moving, nothing happening. Um, the last few episodes have been really good, though. I, I, I've liked it. Like we we definitely are on the higher end of who likes this. Um, we've always kind of liked it, but I do need to watch the last one. I mean, I, I most of my time the last three weeks has been binging four seasons of slow horses <laughs> slow horses baby which is so fucking it's so good it's it's a great it's a great show they're so bad at it's marketing fur- dude it's yeah further proof apple tv stinks at marketing their shows it's a funny british spy show with like it's it's like a it's like a really crazy good blend of a lot of funny but also not even close to at the expense of a very good spy like intriguing mystery. Yeah. And the last this past season has been fantastic. I'm I'm like I'm pissed. I'm all caught up now. Like I was like yesterday I went to watch the next episode and it said, you know, Apple TV will put up the next episode. Yeah. Like when you click on it, it says coming soon. I went to go click play. I was like, oh fuck, I gotta wait a week now. I'm all caught up. So yeah, not that it's been out for. Almost four years now, but Slow Horses is great. Yeah. Uh, did you watch the last one? No, I haven't watched it yet. Yeah. Well, actually, you watched a shit ton of movies, I feel like, over the last few days. Yeah, I also saw the SNL movie last night. Yes. Um, yeah. Perfectly fine. I think some people, I think general audiences will probably enjoy it, like, on a Bohemian Rhapsody level, if that makes sense. Like, it's very much point and, oh, like... Sounds great. Yeah, it's very much, like, point and be like, hey, remember that? Yeah. Mighty Mouse. The Mighty Mouse sketch. Yeah. But outside that, it's just like, yeah. But that's I, like, that was the thing with Bohemian Rhapsody, right? People were like, oh, but you, come on, you didn't like the Live Aid thing? Yeah. Well, that's on YouTube. Yeah, that's the whole the whole time I was sitting there like, I wish I was watching the first episode of SNL instead, doing like, like watching actual John Belushi and actual Chevy Chase. Yeah. Oh. I'd have to drive to up to Hollywood, <clears throat> excuse me, or LA to go see it. But I'm just going to wait till next week. Yeah, that's, I don't think that's super impressive. See you next Friday. How was uh, LaBelle? He's good. 
like all the performances are like good, but it's just like they're doing imitations of other. I guess Lauren Michaels is an exception because you don't really know him that well. But the performances are just mostly imitations of other people that yeah. we are very familiar with. It's fair. Um, There's so many like random things I've watched. Like I watched Salem's Lot. Yeah, Hold yeah your how breath, was that? House of Spoils. Salem's Lot um, was like kind Wolf's of- was. Wolf's is the greatest waste of good chemistry I've ever seen in a movie. <laughs> I still haven't watched it. I'm like, I, I, everything I've heard about it is, is like it's kind of a, a shitty script. You know, Wolf's two is going to happen. Wolf's, yeah, that's right. You ever, y- y- yeah, it set, it sets up a sequel at the end. That's not even like a spoiler. You ever see somebody like, and they're they're kind of just like this, and they kind of just staring off into space, and you just know like they've lost all consciousness. That was me watching Wolf's. I'm just like, what am I watching at this point? Like, this is so like. This, this is nothing. It's a nothing movie. Oh. And, and they're so good together. That's the shame. It's like they are, you know, like all those those rock movies. You know, this movie will be coming out the, with the, the rock. The red seven, one. Red yeah. one. Oh, my God. We were like, this is the fakest chemistry I've ever seen on screen. It's a total opposite with Brad Pitt and George Clooney. Like, they are so good. You could, they, you know, they don't need a script. Like, that's how good they are together. But this is so bland. Mm. You're just like, ugh. Cool concept, too. Speaking yeah, of. Yeah, it's, it's a decent, yeah, it's. It's just like, what the fuck? Speaking of Red One, J.K. Simmons in that movie, J.K. Simmons in SNL pulls his dick out. So Does he? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hammer. A good movie, Between the Temples with Jason Schwartzman. Between the Temples? That's oh. on. You can you can stream that now. Between the Temples, very... Uh, some It's divisive a bit in the end. Some people are going to hate that movie, but I really liked it. And then don't watch uh, Killer Heat on Amazon. That's mm. a bad movie. Yeah, it just keeps well, Joseph Gordon Levitt. Yeah. I, I just remembered. I, I did see a n- movie that's coming out on Netflix in a couple weeks. Amelia Perez. Mm. That's more batshit insane than Joker and Megalopolis. Like easily clears it. One of the more Bat insane. Batshit isn't bad or like it's, actually doing something. It's bad. Um, it is all over the place. Um, it, it's a musical. It's like part Narcos. <laughs> okay. Isn't she? Isn't Selena Gomez like pot- potentially getting a nomination for it? She's fucking terrible in that movie. <laughs> I, okay, they all won right, like so, so they won like the joint. They gave it to the whole all the women in that movie at con. So that might be what's got like, a participation trophy. Yeah, they That's gave cool. them like all. It's a shared best actress award. Which <laughs> Zoe Saldana is very good. She's like good in everything. She's. I feel like she's very rarely prone in a bad performance, even if it's been in a bad property. Um, but yeah, that's that's what we've been watching lately. Um, now we can talk about Joker to Fwa Adu. Uh, Arthur Fleck. Is I called it Foiled Deluxe. That's foiled. why I texted somebody. I didn't. I didn't care enough to look it up. <laughs> Arthur Fleck is institutionalized in Arkham, awaiting his trial for crimes as the Joker. Uh, while struggling with his dual identity, Arthur not only stumbles upon true love, but finds the music that's always been inside him. <laughs> hate that fucking that last sentence of that really just killed me to even read out loud uh the same a lot of the same uh characters from the first one uh adding in obviously lady gaga as harley quinn brendan gleason katherine keener uh steve coogan for like two seconds what a waste that was uh and a couple other uh, harry lottie from uh industry as harvey dent um okay so this movie, I think that we talked about it a lot when they initially uh, talked about, like, hey, we're making Joker 2. We we're kind of like, uh, I don't know how you make a Joker 2. Like, how do you possibly expand on this? The story ended kind of definitively. Uh, and then they say, hey, we're making it a musical. And her and Lady Gaga is involved. That, I think, for at least for all of us, we we're like, that's kind of cool. That's like an inventive way to move this story along. This movie, to me, is such a half-assed attempt at a sequel because they took that idea of the musical and they're like, well, we want to do a musical, but we're not really going to do a musical. And that turned this movie into essentially just uh, a court, a very boring, a very bland courtroom drama that is periodically interrupted every 15 minutes by bad karaoke, where they don't even let the, the main, their main new star, Lady Gaga, one of the better singers in all of entertainment, you don't even really let her sing. And it was such a fucking insane bore. It had, like, people were legitimately booing at the end of the, my showing. Like, they were... That's not shocking at all. They were, like, furious. And I honestly I don't blame them. And I think you had said a good People next to me clapped. It's... They're insane. Like, I don't know who this movie could possibly yep. be for. I've seen people try to defend it and be like, Oh, well, you don't get mental illness. Dude, I, I don't think Todd Phillips understands anything about mental illness. This movie is for nothing. It was made for nobody. It is putrid. One of my least favorite movies of this year by far. It is the funniest thing is it's not wrong, but the idea that this 
doesn't want to be a musical is actually wrong because it doesn't want to be literally anything. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not like, oh, it's not really a musical. It's like, like, you know, people talk about like La La Land. Like, it is a musical, but they're like, you know, it's not like a full on musical. Mm-hmm. It's like, but it's, you know, it's a little more romp. No, this is not just not a musical. It's not anything. It's like, it, it just has no identity. It has, like, just no life to it. It's so lifeless. It's like, courtroom now we're back in the jail okay now it's the courtroom here's a dream sweet it's just so it's just monotonous like oh okay it's like all right it's almost is it over yet like are we gonna get to the end and then i guess as a spoiler can we say spoilers now yeah we can say spoilers whatever now somebody on the on the discord for lights can bars i made up a great point it's like they got to a point in the movie where they kind of ran out of things to do and they're like just blow up the fucking courthouse mm-hmm. there's like just blow it up just do it now. Just like whatever. Like I don't know what else to do with this movie. Just blow it up. And you're like, okay. And then it kind of ends. Like it has a kind of a drawn out ending. And then a, I, I guess like the Heath Ledger Joker is at the end of the fucking movie, or like another Joker. Yeah. Like that's that's like the weird implication that everyone's kind of picking up. It's just so. It just meanders into nothing. And I cannot believe that's why this movie's bad. I never would have guessed this movie's bad because it's boring. It's so boring. Yeah, I mean, the first Joker movie, well, I didn't love it. It is like, because it's just not very original. Uh, it's well made. It's like, when you get, it's like when you get like one of those meal kits. Uh, I won't say a specific brand. I don't know who we're dealing with right now. But it's like when you get one of those meal kits and you'll make one of those dinners and it's like you're following all the instructions so it just comes out well naturally. This movie's like he's got great ingredients and he's trying to make a new dish all on his own. But he just fucking fucked it up. Fucked, fucked it all up. Didn't cook anything. Everything's undercooked, really, like you guys said. Didn't commit to being a musical. On paper, this sounds awesome, I think. But never it commits to, never commits to being a musical. Not once. I actually like the opening, like the cartoon anima- animation. Yeah, that yeah, was cool. Like, it's like, this is a cool way to open it. Just kind of recap what happened last time. And then it just meanders till the end. The, th- the, the third act, I think there's 20 minutes missing from it. Because... I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but the trailers, there's like half of the trailers is just not in the movie. Mm -hmm. Like half of Lady Gaga's like shots from the trailers are not in this movie at all. Um, I think that what probably happened was they made studios execs sit through this movie. And after the first like 60 minutes, they're like, oh, no, cut this fucking shit down. Cut it down right now. This is so boring. And uh, yeah, it just doesn't really it doesn't have a satisfying ending. It doesn't have a satisfying middle. Nothing about this is satisfying. I do not know a single soul who I'd recommend this to. Not Joker fans, not musical fans, not Lady Gaga fans. Oh, they must hate Lady Gaga fans. I can't or imagine be so pissed at this they, movie. They, they don't even commit to her being like Harley Quinn. It's no. Like, which, like, I guess they don't commit to him being the Joker either. I guess that's like the whole. But it's like they just don't. It's so surface level in every way that it says and does absolutely nothing. And I like the first movie. I gave that a 90. And I, I stand by, like, I think that's a good movie. Um, is it wholly original? No, you're definitely right about that. But, like, I think that's a good movie. This is this is just, like, it, it's, it's, it's almost like it knows it's unnecessary. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I hate that. We always talk about that. Like, I hate the idea, like, well, it's unnecessary. Well, everything's unnecessary. It's like anything past the first is unnecessary, but you can still make a good sequel. Like this is like it, it. It's like they start it and they go, "Oh shit, we probably this. We don't need to do this." And then they just kind of like gave up. Mm-hmm. There's nothing to it. It's crazy. Yeah, it's like I, I don't even know how to explain it in like baseball. Like, I kind of wish they just he struck out swinging. You know what I mean? And like he just didn't. Todd Phillips, that is like he just. I don't know. He just like worked the count and lost after uh, and, sh- and struck out looking. And it's really just fucking frustrating to me. Uh, some good things about it though. I do want to note a few good things about it. I think the cinematography actually took a step up. In I think it, the last one. I think it looks incredible. It I, looks I think awesome. the movie it does look good. It, 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 that almost makes it more frustrating is that it yeah. it looks I don't know how, what yeah. format you guys saw this in. I saw it in the IMAX, IMAX 70 yeah. millimeter and it was it was gorgeous. Like it really uses the IMAX format as well as really any movie I've seen the past few years. I mean, it looks great. Really good long like uh, long takes too throughout it. Like mm-hmm. even the opening where it's like him and his weird ass like shoulder blade thing, and they're yeah. like walking through, dumping their piss pots out. Uh, the scene like even the courtroom explosion, like they run that scene for a while yeah, all the way through, and that one, which, which they try to do a Harvey Dent nod there. Yeah, yeah. They try to do the two face nod nod. Um, but like a lot of the shots look good, even like in the flashback sequences where like they're doing the talk show and stuff. That looked good. Um, they did some cool looking things with light. I think like bouncing off of stuff. It looked really awesome. 
Um, and I think the production value in general just looks decent. And Joaquin Phoenix is good. Like he's, I would say, like probably just about as good as the first one, but certainly not better. Mr. Puddles. I like His that. Foghorn Leghorn thing was very funny. That was the best, my favorite part of the movie, probably. Yeah. Mr. Puddles. It makes fun of I hope you get thing. cancer. That was funny. Yeah. Yeah, him know. like like that's actually yeah, him him going up there and defending and like being his own defense, like like that's that's where it was like this is more of what there should have been, but everything else is so boring. Mm-hmm. It's so bland. It, it's it's you know what it's uninspired is probably the best word. Yeah. It's like you throw out the idea like, hey, what if the next one's a musical? And they're like, yes. And then he he started. He's like, oh fuck, I don't, I don't know what that means. I don't know how to do that. Yeah. It's. Uh, but then they were way too far down the road, so they just made this. It's and it's so weird because the first one is is very dark, but also very I would say exciting because like there's like a slow build throughout it. This one is just like a sort of courtroom drama, and it's not even really a drama. It's just like I don't know how to explain it. Like how do you and how do you recommend this or to anybody? Yeah, and it's like just fucking depressing too. Yeah. <laughs> it's really depressing. I mean, the first one was too, but at least it was good. There's stuff happening in that, you know. Um, I don't. Know, yeah, no. This is just missing like anything to make it just, worth watching. I just want to know whose decision it was to do this half talk, half sing thing. That feels like the biggest issue to me. Like your movie dramatically improves if you just let lady gaga bust out her fucking pipes Mm -hmm. and rock the house like why not i don't understand why why she would even agree to doing this yeah and it it does feel and i think a lot of lady lady gaga like fan accounts whatever that i saw not that they would have inside information were like um they were on the same path as you where they're like where did all of her scenes go like it seems like a lot of her shit got cut and a lot of her like like you said, it's just a waste of talent. Why would you not? Why would you have her do this like pseudo half in half out thing? It makes no fucking sense. And I'm already furious just like again reading some of the replies to the. I mean, they're like, you just don't get it. You just don't get it. This is what this is like. This is, this is like it's a boring fucking movie. It is insanely boring. And it being every single time, I would say after like probably around the halfway point of the movie, every time they started to break out into a new song, like the audience was like groaning, like people were like, oh, like what are we doing here? Yeah. Yeah, I just I, maybe I mean, if you told me she didn't see the script when she signed up, I'd completely believe you. Yeah, and I wouldn't blame her. Because if I'm her, and I'm told, "Hey, Joker, ninety fucking nominations, best actor, best picture nomination," would you want to be in the sequel as Harley Quinn, a very famous, well liked character, and you can sing? Who the fuck would say no to that? Mm-hmm. You'd never say no to that. Unless you read a script and the script stinks, which I'm, I'm, I, like, I almost think that she didn't see any script for that thing. Mm-hmm. Or, like, they just didn't pitch it to her the way that they envisioned it to be, basically. If that makes sense? Yeah. Dude. Also, Joker being a two-pump guy. I mean, that's very predictable. Yeah. Come on, <laughs> bud. Gotta get you some Roman or something. Some Roman swipes in the, into Arkham Asylum. That was, uh, that was something. Also um, a waste of... Not not as egregious as Lady Gaga being a waste, but Brendan Gleeson also just wasted. Yeah. Like, just playing generic prison guard number one. Like I almost didn't think it was him. I didn't know he was in it. And I'm like, that can't be what he's doing in this movie. Just a goon. Yeah. Actually, well, then, then when I realized it was him, I was like, okay, this is going to be a cameo. He's, he's, in the, he's like a lead character in the movie. Yep. And he's just a goon, like a, like a brainless goon, more or less. That part was crazy. And I think that the other thing that really threw me off in this, and we talked about it a little bit, is just the ending is is fucking stupid it's so dumb and like they're trying to do i feel like he was trying to do something with like the i don't know the again the the schizoid part of element of it where like harley leaves him and he just goes right back to arkham and then he just gets stabbed by that fake heath ledger cutting his the sides of his mouth out with the with the thing as he dies and it's like what an unsatisfying arc or unsatisfying conclusion for the character of Arthur Fleck after the first one gave him a very satisfying conclusion. Just him getting bottled away in Arkham. Like, that's great. A great, great ending. And to switch it to this is so fucking lame. So lame. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I, I don't really, I don't really know what the fallout from this is going to be, but this is one of those ones where you almost think, like, man, they're probably not going to make, like, something that goes out this far of a limb. Mm-hmm. 
But it didn't. Again. That's the craziest thing. It didn't go out on a limb. You know, right? Like, like they're not going to do like another Joker again. Yeah, like this take, is going to be one of the things people are like, all right, let's just stick to the script with comic book movies. Yeah, yeah they'll they'll take the wrong lessons from this. Like yeah. they will think yep. that it's because it's a musical and not because oh well they just didn't really make a good movie. <laughs> yeah, and they didn't try. And the budget was so was like what three times the size of the original movie or something like that. Oh, was it really? The, the original movie I think yep. was like fifty million dollars, and this one was like two hundred million. By the way, we we talk we talk Megalopolis. Megalopolis is gonna make like ten bucks, dude. Like like five million dollars. That's crazy. Let's see box office. That's insane. That. Wait till I buy the the steel book, the Blu-ray, <laughs> the 4K UHD. <laughs> we we bought his wine. I'll buy buy it. the Megalopolis review. It was very good. Yeah, the guy he's in the wrong business. The Coppola wine's good. Yeah, uh, it's made back. Megalopolis as of two days ago has made back five percent of its total budget. Woof. That's crazy, and it, it it ain't going up. No, that's in, dude. It's made. <laughs> yeah, let's see, seven million dollars worldwide. Sorry, he spent one hundred and thirty-six million of his own. His vineyards, his hotels will cover it all. Yeah, and what did that all go? Because you, you got to think that some of those actors took like a, a relative pay cut to work with Fritz for Coppola, right? Where they're like, I'm not going to ask you like studio money to a movie you're financing yourself, and you're also a legendary director. Like I'm down. Adam Driver is trying to rake him over the coals over money. So where did all that money go? Uh, the like, uh, golden or what do you call it? The the tripping at ball scenes or the cock bow and arrow. Yeah, yeah. Some that. of the yeah, some of the some of the like CGI, I guess, some of the special effects. Yeah, which some of them looked really good. Yeah, and then some of them looked really bad. Real bad. He didn't like it when he used his special uh, megalodon metal to repair his shot out eyeball. Oh god. I like that he invented something. He's got that he invented this thing that just saves people who got shot in the head. But, but it's also a building material. Yeah. Did you, did you laugh when the kid shot him? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thanks. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, uh, dude, even like, I'm looking at the, the opening, or the, the poster for Joker. This scene's not in the movie. Oh, yeah. No, that's like the big closing moment in the trailer. It's not in the movie. Yeah, like both of them coming down the stairway doing like the Joker dance or whatever. That scene is not even in the fucking movie, dude. It's Why were they trying to trick people? <laughs> that's, why, he, that's why it had to have been just cut material. It feels like it was like a, like purposely bad. Like I don't know how you go through the editing process of this movie and you're like this is good. People will like this. Joker fans will like this. Not people who know Joker are going to love this. Like there's no fucking way. Like something happened. Some miscommunication here happened. I don't know what. Uh and it's kind of funny that just Joaquin Phoenix did like almost no press for it. <laughs> like yeah. just Lady Gaga was out there dying on the sword for Joker everywhere. It just <laughs> probably for the best. I don't know if you've ever seen a Joaquin Phoenix uh press interview. Never that great. No. Yeah. Uh, he, I saw him getting grilled for dropping out of that, uh, the gay movie, whatever it was. Yeah, that's a tough. I, he will not get a big job for a little bit. That is. He really fucked that production. Yeah, they were like already in like the middle of everything, and he's like, yeah, I'm done. Yeah, that put Todd Haynes in the hole. Yeah, big time. Uh, I saw him, them asking about that, and um, at like whatever, it might have been Con or something, and he's just like, yeah, I'll just, what's between us? This movie's way gayer than having sex with another man. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's fucking bad movie. We hated it. Uh, I think it's yeah. one of the worst. I give it a fifty-four. Yeah, for me, it's like probably in the. Uh, yeah, I'm at like a fifty. Like, and it's a bad fifty, which that's infuriating. Like I said, it looks great, and I think the performances are solid. But yeah, I can't recommend this to a single fucking person. I don't know a single person. This I can this is one of those things too where we see a lot of movies, and I've seen some some utter trash this year. So this is better than that stuff. But if you're someone who sees 10, 12 movies a year, this will be the worst. I would not be shocked if this is your worst movie of the year. Like I, I, I will not debate you on that. If you're like the worst movie of the year, I'm like, how many movies you've seen? Like anywhere between like twenty and thirty, I'd be like, that's absolutely fair. Yeah, because it is. It's a bad movie. I'm like somewhere in the mid forties, I would say, like just a little bit lower than you guys, just because not. uh, I think the non-committal, the cowardice of Dodd Phillips in this really pissed me off a lot. Uh, but that's um, uh, Joker 2, Fuala Do. Uh, now we're going to do a quick draft of bo- the worst movie sequels. So the worst, and we, we narrowed it down to only uh, the second movie in franchises, so you can't do like Godfather 3 or something like that. Uh, randomize the order ahead of time. It is going to be Gooch, then Jeff, then me. Uh, so Gooch, you get to start out. Worst movie sequel that you can think of that you've seen. Uh, when I was in middle school, I saw a little movie called American Psycho. And uh, I loved it, believe it or not. Uh, it really rewired my 13-year-old brain, and I thought I was Patrick Bateman for two weeks. 
Uh, I found out there was a sequel starring Mila Kunis, and I was like, oh my god. Went and watched it. That is the, one of the worst movies I have ever seen till this so day. Bad. It is so fucking bad. Now, mm -hmm. from what I understand, it was not branded as an American Psycho sequel until like a month before they released it. But the fact that they tagged on American Psycho 2 to that to that movie and then try to set it up as like a sequel off the opening sequence where I guess Patrick Bateman kills her mom in front of like the baby and she grows up and becomes a psycho because of that. It's fucking bad. It is so bad. I can't believe it exists and that more people haven't heard about it. But yeah, one, um, of, one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Directed by Morgan J. Freeman. Freeman. Yeah, Morgan Freeman. Oh. It's it's kind of like a Cloverfield paradox or whatever. Where they're like like last second dark. Oh, it's Ugh. actually Cloverfield. Uh, by the way, dude, it's that movie's a fucking stinker. And better for you to be obsessed with American Psycho then than to be later in life. Yeah, now I'm I, I still love the movie, but I, I think I understand it a little bit, a little bit better than my little twelve year old brain could. Uh, so American Psycho off the board, Jeff, you're up. Uh, so are we gonna? So this is a big one. Are we gonna count this as the second, or are we gonna count it as the fourth? If you say no, I won't take it. Batman and Robin. Are we going to count that as the sequel to uh, the Killer. Batman Forever, the one that came before it or whatever it was? So like, canonically, I think it is supposed to be, right? Well, it's you, the fourth, like, do you it's the count fourth that with as Michael the, Go. Yeah. <laughs> do you count that as the fourth? Because then I won't take it. It's the fourth in the Go trilogy. <laughs> The fourth Go quadrology. <laughs> it's the second Schumacher one. That's the yeah, yeah. I, I think that I think that, that counts. counts. Yeah, it's very. Okay, so yeah, those Bat two are Batman very and Robin, from, uh, the Burton. Yeah, Batman and Robin. Yeah, I mean the Batman and Robin is it's a dreadful movie. Um, I actually enjoy watching it every now and then because it is kind of like so bad it's good, but it is, it is just, it's a franchise killer. It mm -hmm. killed Batman. That's so hard to like, do. <laughs> They stopped making Batman yeah. movies for, about, for, like for almost, 10 years. almost ten years. Yeah, yeah. It's fucked. like like they're like we need to never speak about this character ever again, at least until the next millennium. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. It was so, and, and in the end, it ended up being a good thing. Um, but yeah, Batman and Robin, terrible, terrible movie. Bad movie, but Uma Thurman. In it? Oh, of course, Arnie in it. Dude, Arnie, Arnie is actually giving it his all. Uh, <laughs> it's true. It is the fourth movie in the Go verse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> old horny bastard he almost monster. dies in that movie he has he um we did a commentary shits. on it he has oh, the shit right the disease? he has a specific disease right um he has oh my god what's it called that's right they 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 have his medical information is on a, a cd that said alfred cd ah. <laughs> mcgregor syndrome mcgregor syndrome yeah <laughs> so yeah fucked. they're like here's his here's his vitals and it's this it's alfred cd <laughs> yeah 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 so fucking 90s man uh so batman and robin off the board i'll pick one it is definitely the worst of these of these three or these two so far, and it's in a weirder space because uh, the original movie isn't like tremendously looked upon very well. But I'll pick Highlander two, The Quickening. Highlander, <laughs> yeah, you hate that movie, dude. I've always hated the movie so bad because I really like the original Highlander. Like Christopher Lambert, God bless him, awful actor. He was like the Highlander, still so good in spite of him, and like uh, Sean Connery being like a Spanish Egyptian like scottish also like immortal time being and them all and what's his name um clancy brown as the the cregan like all these guys killing each other with this queen soundtrack i love highlander and then the second movie is just so fucking bad like horrifically bad and it like i think destroyed d Laurinaitis's company or whatever um they had to shoot it in argentina and like they ran out of money and like 15 different things like bogged down the production it is a truly dog shit movie very 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 bad i know that like uh, i think sean connery like dis disavowed it or something like that um but yeah i'd go to highlander 2 and uh, i disavow highlander 2 it's actually not bad it's not terrible <laughs> uh, pretty solid so i do highlander and then secondly i think i would do <laughs> this is one we've also talked about a lot uh blues brothers 2000 no. Man, dude, Blues Brothers 2000, one of the one of the most disrespectful movies to maybe ever be made. It is because Blues Brothers, the original movie, is so fucking like it is such like a um, a beloved, I would say, movie and like a great time capsule to that period and like two great actors going back and forth. And then Blues Brothers 2000 is a literal like a literal spit in the face. It is so fucking bad, putrid, horrible, horrible movie. Uh, we've talked about it, I think like briefly in the old episodes. But man, oh yeah. Bad. That's uh, one of those where at that age, I was still a kid and my dad was just excited to show me stuff that he yeah. liked when he was younger and he loved the original Blues Brothers. So that's coming out and he's getting me fucking amped up for this yeah. Blues Brothers 2000 
I remember being like not liking it at all. Dude, <laughs> being so let down. God, it stunk. Dad, your shit stink. Yeah, this, this is a bad one, Dad. <laughs> uh, so Highlander 2 and Blues Brothers 2000 off the board. Jeff, you're back up. Yeah, I'm not going to take... There's there's a super obvious second movie at number two, but I don't want to take it. It's too obvious. So I'm going to go to technically the third movie released in the franchise, but the second one was a prequel. So I'm going to go with Dumb and Dumber 2. Yeah. Uh, the two is God. T.O. Dumb and Dumber-er is a prequel when Harry met Lloyd. That is a horrible movie. But I'll tell you what. Dumb and Dumber 2, the one that was released like 10 years ago, also a terrible movie. Mm-hmm. Very so unfunny. Like the the way they set it up is terrible. Like the, how they bridge the gap of the twenty years since the first movie. It's just it, it it takes everything that's funny about the first one and it finds a way to miss on every turn. It's incredible mm-hmm. how bad that movie is. That was a stinker, man. I just I just remember Dave and Big Cat having a deal with that movie, and they had to go to different college campuses dressed up in the Harry and Lloyd suits. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think Jeff Daniels was embarrassed with that movie too. And you can tell, like he is not into doing that movie. He's just doing like the newsroom at the same time, like a high prestige role. Oh like, yeah, this, this, yeah, another, doesn't another. He, I'd almost argue this movie's better than the newsroom. But doesn't yeah. he have like a daughter in that movie that's like super smart or something? Or so. I can't remember. He's got a daughter that's either super smart or just as stupid. Uh, Fuck, I don't remember. Is it really? terrible? Though when Harry met Lloyd might be worse. Who's the actors in Harry Met Lloyd? I forget. It was like because they they actually didn't look dissimilar to them, but it was just such a dog shit movie. That was that was that was one that should have stayed in the in uh in the nineties and not been touched again. Uh, so Dumb and Dumber two off the board. Gucci back to back. Uh, I will go with the movie that came out a few years ago. Very excited. Just like Joker two, great trailer that had me kind of excited for it. And on paper, it sounds like fun. That would be Wonder Woman 1984. Yeah. Um, oh, on paper, yeah. I was like, oh, 80s synth music, Wonder Woman, the first one, like not the best movie ever, but very good. And then two was fucking awful. It's only like soured in my mind. The more clips I see from it, when the, people will post the clip of her <laughs> jumping on the car, <laughs> her line reads are, she's hit a, she hits a new low in her acting ability in that movie. Uh, somehow misused Pedro Pascal hard to do Kristen Wiig is the villain or like she the secondary remember. villain yeah. yeah uh a very 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 bad movie um everything about that looks so good too like even like they were like oh we're bringing back Chris Pine I'm like oh that's kind of weird but he's cool they have good they have decent chemistry whatever and then uh she's like, just molesting some random guy yeah isn't she like Basically, she like she put his spirit into a, like a random body or some shit yes yeah <laughs> And the the trailer, I agree with you. It was like Blue Monday is playing, right? Like all mm-hmm. the synth is going and like everything about the vibes feel great. And then just dog shit movie, man. So bad. And that like all gold feather suit. Yeah. Oh, man. That was that was a really rough one. That was And that's one that came out, I think, in the middle of COVID. Yeah. It, like, I think like right. I think it was like. No, no. It was the middle of COVID. I think they dropped it straight to streaming. It right. was like right after they made the decision that they were going to start just releasing their shit. Yeah. Uh, on streaming. God, that was bad. And created the Kristen Wake. And she was she Cheetah? Was that the character? Yeah, character? Cheetah. Oh, and she they did the thing where it was like she has glasses, but now she doesn't, so she's really hot. She's now. hot now, yeah. That was a brutal one. Um so Wonder Woman eighty four off the board, your next pick. Uh you guys can tell me if this counts or not. Uh but Attack of the Clones? Yeah, that's what I was talking about. I think it counts. Second um, movie. Yeah. I yeah. Would say so. Attack of the Clown Clones. The Clowns. <laughs> <laughs> Two Joker brained. Hey, you got him. What a roast. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> It'd be great if you're in the theater, the screening with George. Like the first one, he's like, George, more like Attack of the Clowns. Yeah. Great work, George. Oh, my God. George Lucas would like Megalopolis. I hope he's seen it. Oh, I think he did. I think he, he helped with something on it or something or gave notes on it. Yeah, he would, he would love that. Uh-huh. But Attack of the Clones, I, I hate the the reclamation of that movie that some people try to pull. Like, it's a bad, it's a bad, bad movie. Yeah. Nothing happens. It's boring as shit. Doesn't make a lot of sense. The acting is terrible. It looks bad. Like there's just not not much to grab onto there. I would say the only redeeming thing is the the closing battle of Geonosis is cool. Yes, yes, the pit. Yeah, yeah. Like that. not even just the pit. Like the pits to me is like fine, whatever. But like the whole actual everything after that, like the invasion with the clones of Geonosis looks cool. The final duel when you're a kid and you're watching Yoda do all the flips and shit. When you're a kid, that yes. shit was awesome. Looking back now, though, I'm like that yeah. just looks. It just doesn't age well because yeah. it's CGI Yoda. They also. 
it's when it's when they started making him talk way weirder than he really does. Yeah. He doesn't talk like that in Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Like he has backwards talk, but it's like they made like the character version of him. There's one line he in says the prequel where he's like, "Around the survivors, a perimeter creep." Yep, exactly <laughs> the line. That's the exact line I was thinking of. <laughs> yep. So funny. So fucking it's, stupid, dude. Uh, not if anything to say about it, I have. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. No, no, he doesn't talk like that in Empire yeah. Strikes Back. He doesn't. He does backwards talk, but he, not to that extent. Yeah, dude, it's so, so stupid. And it is it is truly, the romantic parts of that movie are so bad. Like, every, everything between Anakin and Padme is awful. Uh, so, Attack of the Clones off the board. Uh, Jeff, you are back up. Uh, I'm going to go with the 2016 movie. And I actually... On my letterbox, I actually put the review I actually wrote because actually I don't think I have the tweet anymore. Uh, Independence Day Resurgence. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. um, a four out of a hundred for me. I said, pretend the first movie is a pretty decent hamburger. This is like taking the hamburger, soaking it with water, pushing it through a paper shredder, then coating it with trash. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what this movie is. It is it is every way you could take something that is okay. I'm not going to Independence Day is a great movie. It's a, it's a solid movie for what it is. And taking that solid movie and finding a way to pick apart everything good about it and then turning it into the worst version of itself. Mm -hmm. It is horrible. It's a horrible movie. And it sets up a sequel, which is even more egregious than anything that happens before those final five minutes. It's like it's like a it's like a rib it's a big red ball, right? It's like a big red mass of energy that sets up a it's it's so bad. And that's saying that Roland Emmerich thought he was like cooking with this movie. Yeah. That's when they were when they thought that uh, Liam Hemsworth might be the Hemsworth too. They're like, oh, yes, he might be the better one. Nope, he did like that, and then like um, there was another really dog shit, not like one of the Hunger Games or something like that. He did another really bad one right back to back. That was that was tough. But Independence Day two was that was a big time stinker. Big terrible. Time stinker. Shout out to Gaz, number one Roland Emmerich fan on the yeah, big Roland Emmerich guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so Independence Day 2 off the board. I would do next um, a m- movie that is truly one of the, like the most wretched late sequels uh, that I've seen. And the first one, I, I don't, and I don't think the world of either. Um, but I would do Son of the Mask. Like I like the mask a decent amount. I don't think it's like some like oh. un- untouchable movie or anything like that. But for Son sure, of- same thing. Probably what I think with Independence Day. Exactly. It's like you know, yeah. it's a good '90s time capsule blockbuster. No, I mean, up. Well, in Independence Day blockbuster case, but like this, just like good movie. Um, but Son of the Mask with Jamie Kennedy and Alan Cummings is so, so egregiously unfunny and uncool and just lacks every bit of charm that like Jim Carrey brings to the table. Like substituting him with like, Jim Carrey with Jamie Kennedy is like a, like a war crime. Like it is an unbelievable attempt to try to, to replace the magic of like a guy who owned the 90s, um, which is insane to me. It was so bad that the baby's wearing the mask. The dogs wearing the mask. Everyone's wearing the mask. It just, it was so bad. The bad bad. Oh, I movie. forgot the dog gets the mask. There's there's some pretty good behind the scenes on YouTube. You can go look back and like just how it was made, why it was made, why James. It's just like everything. It's just so bad. Mm-hmm. Real big stinker. And then I would back to back that with a more recent one that uh, we reviewed. It really. God, I hate I hated this movie because it's essentially just like a commercial for Warner Brothers Space Jam Two, a new legacy. Oh. Uh, Space Jam Two is a sequel that we watched that movie, and it, it is literally the whole movie serves no purpose other than to be a commercial for Warner Brothers IP. That is the entire oh, yeah. reason for its existence. It's like, hey, you remember like Wiley e. Coyote? Hey, you remember fucking ro- whatever like P- Porky Pig? Like, yeah, man, we remember these guys. Like, it's it's uh, that's not why we're here. We're here to watch LeBron James. Hey, remember basketball. a Clockwork Orange? <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh my god, it was crazy that, that how they expanded the catalog outside of like that general Looney Tunes character uh, area. They had the mask sitting courtside, dude. It was oh my god, right? That's movie. right. <laughs> Uh, it was just such a bad movie and like not nothing it was nothing to do I think with LeBron James and like everyone's like oh LeBron it's not gonna be as good like Michael Jordan wasn't a great actor or anything in Space Jam it was just like a cool seeing all these guys come together and do a movie and this one they try to do the same sort of deal and it's just it turns into like one big commercial and it's it sucked really did not care for a new legacy whatsoever Um, and so that is off the board and now Jeff you are back up yeah, uh, my next one is going to be kind of similar to what I mean. It's really in the same vein as all of these. Zoolander two. Oh, yeah. oh, um, stinker! Really, honestly, 
maybe worse than the Dumb and Dumber movie in terms of like just not getting it. It, it. It's a movie filled with cameos. It's people so far past their time, which they should be playing any of these characters. Nothing funny at all. Everything redeeming from the first, gone out the window. Anything they try to do again isn't funny anymore. It's bad. Should have made Walter Mitty too. <laughs> the, and they were like amped. I remember when they, they had the, the press tour roll through GMA when I was there working. I remember, oh, I remember going to see the, the screener for this. Like, holy fucking shit. I like the first one a decent amount too. I think that's still oh, holding yeah. pretty well. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's kind of got a second life on social, right? Yeah. yeah. People like it a lot, and especially because like smaller characters from that became famous. Like Alexander Skarsgård was like a like a one of the models that he lived with in the movie, and uh, like a couple other smaller characters became big. But yeah, it was David Duchovny as the hand model. David Duchovny was the hand model. That's right. I always forget Great about bit. that. Um, do, by the way, to back up, I just found the list of every IP that appears in Space Jam: A New Legacy. Just to go run through a quick one: um, Superman, Austin Powers, Casablanca. <laughs> Mad Max Fury Road, The Matrix, The Maltese Falcon, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, Rick and Morty, Wonder Woman, The Justice League, Captain Caveman. Oh, I love Captain Caveman. Um, My favorite. Chappelle's show is referenced in it. Wait, what? The, I guess because Granny drops the line, game blouses during the thing. Yes. Oh. Yeah. The Dick Dastardly and Muttley. I don't even know who that is. Uh, Flintstones. Godfather. Oh, Dick Dastardly. Great character. Nobody has cared about in 50 years. <laughs> the Godfather. I don't remember that at all. Several Paisans appear in the audience. In the sever- <laughs> oh. Gremlins, Harry Potter, the Herculoids. What the fuck is the Herculoids? Oh, it's a Hanna-Barbera cartoon, of course. It. Ja- I remember it now. I remember Pennywise showing up at some point. Yes. Uh, Jabberjaw, the Jetsons, King Kong, Mangilla Gorilla. Why wow, does that sound familiar? Penelope Pitts. Oh, uh, this just, the list goes on. It's on. the Manila Gorilla. Yeah, it's another. another it's just. It's so many characters that nobody cares about anymore, mm-hmm. and haven't been relevant since the fifties and sixties. It's a wild group of dudes uh, to all come together. I mean, I mean, like, like Dick Dastardly. That's like. I mean, like, Majilla Gorilla, like, that's like, I mean, what are we doing here? Holy shit. Oh, I, okay, I recognize. Yeah. The, he, he looks I like, mean, the, mean like the dude from, um, uh, was it Freaky Town? What's the. Like, why even have those characters in it? Why have, like, the Clockwork, a Clockwork Orange courtside? Why, why, didn't, why weren't the Game of Thrones characters courtside? Like, they, they went by that planet yeah. in, like, one of the scenes. Oh, bad movie. Oof. Uh, Zoolander 2 off the board, Gucci, your last two. Uh, I will take somewhat recent movie. Almost killed a character, much like Batman and Robin. The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Um, I like the first Amazing Spider-Man. I think it's fun. Not the best one, but it's fun. The second one, what the fuck? Yeah. I mean, like, it's been talked about ad nauseum, but it's a truly just massive, like, misfire. And it's insane that they watched what happened with Spider-Man 3, and then they did the same fucking thing again. (laughs) They did it again. Like, they knew exactly what would happen. Too many fucking villains. Looks like shit. It's, it's awful. Bad, um, bad renditions of those villains, too. Very, I also like hate, I, I hate the revisionist history that's happened with those movies. Yes, yes. Since, the, yeah. since he reappeared in Spider-Man, yeah. I think the first one's, like, solid. Like, it's good. The second one is truly abysmal and has, like, you cannot defend it. It's... Oh my god, Jamie Foxx dressed up as a nerd when they try to like make him look ugly, yeah. so they just give him fake buck teeth and like, glass. They did the glasses thing and they fuck up his hairline. Dude, this is so stupid. Uh, the Amazing Spider-Man two, and then this is tough. But see, I have Hot Tub Time Machine two on here, but actually, yeah, that was on my list. That's a bad movie. But I'm thinking I actually kind of laughed at a couple things in that movie. So I'm gonna take Pacific Rim two. Uh, oh yeah, Charlie Day has sex with a, a kaiju. I yep. Mean, that one was stu- and yeah. had none of the charm of Del Toro. Yeah, that was that was bad. That was a big stinker. Dude. I can I can be more forgiving to the comedy sequels because, you know, maybe someone finds it funny. Yeah. I just don't know who would ever like Pacific Rim too, and that's the one that plays on TV a lot, which really fucking pisses a me off. On, like it's, all the time. It's always two. It's never one. I mean, one is fucking. One is pretty good too. I think uh, one's great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Pacific, yeah. Pacific Rim off Jeff, your last pick. Pacific Rim 2, that is. So this is this fits with the theme of the Joker. Uh, 
somebody wins an Oscar for the the acting job, and then the sequel comes out, and the sequel stinks. That's Wall Street Two: Money Never Sleeps. Ooh, yeah, we just talked about that recently. I, feel like. I just rewatched it, um, and holy, tr- there's this there's this YouTube account that you can like sign up for for like five bucks a month, and has an an ass load of movies. It's like mm-hmm. Movie Zone or something. Hold on, what's it called? It sounds like something called Movie Sphere. And they have, like, good movies in here. Yeah. Like, Kill Bill is in here, Jackie Brown, Edge of Seventeen, and this was in here, Money Never Sleeps. Holy shit. Yeah. What a bad movie. A terrible concept. It, it bait and switches you a hundred times about that character. It's crazy that, like, I mean, that was an even bigger gap between him winning than, obviously, the Joker. Joker was only a couple years. That was a bad movie. Oh, mm-hmm. terrible. I thought I, I will say I thought you were going to talk about the Chinatown sequel. <laughs> you started talking. Oh yeah, no. You ever seen that? Yeah, this is it's bad. It reminded me of uh, every time I think of Wall Street and Money Never Sleeps. The the Trump deleted scene is so funny. Gordy, yep. we go to the same haircut, Gordy. Oh, yes. Like it's so fucking funny. <laughs> uh, so Wall Street two off. Um, I'm torn between a, a few here, and it's not tipping picks anymore. So I'll, I'll run through them. Um, so I think Evan Almighty is one of the worst. Yeah. When you think of how like kind of flash in the pan funny Bruce Almighty was, and like I feel like they kind of back themselves in a corner because like they do Bruce Almighty and Steve Carell blows up, mm-hmm. right? As the, Bruce Almighty is basically happening, and they're like, "Well, we need to do a movie with Steve Carell now because he's a side character. We could do something funny with him." So bad. Um, Quantum of Solace, I think, could go up there too because yep. Casino Royale was so good, and the fall off to Quantum was really bad. I think. And like also like Speed Two, but like I'm not gonna act like I watched Speed Two more than like once as a kid because that stump. Oh, oh. That so Jason Patrick so stupid. Um, I think I would go with because of how much I liked the first one, I would do Kingsman Two, The Golden Circle. That's good. Oh yeah. I I think that movie, based on for a multitude of reasons, was was so fucking infuriating because the first one is great. It is an awesome. We've we've interviewed Matthew Vaughn before. Um, awesome awesome movie really cool concept really like the music really liked a lot of the like the church sequence in it um uh, t- introduced us to taron edgerton who was amazing um and then the second one they're like hey guys we're making the king golden circle it's gonna have the same crew as before but we're also gonna add channing tatum we're gonna add pedro pascal we're gonna add julianne moore well guess what fucking geez one of these guys is just not gonna be in the entire movie at all and the other guys are sporadically gonna show up it was just a bore overly overwrought CGI mess, uh, just really stupid. Julianne Moore, just kind of bo- bogus villain. Uh, you, didn't, you didn't like the interior, uh, the CGI interior vagina shot? No, no, the yeah, Glastonbury. <laughs> I forgot about that. The, and he has to finger a girl and put the tracker put inside tracker. of her vagina, yep. and then it follows the tracker inside of her CGI vagina. Yep, that and <laughs> the CGI interior. I don't know how that. How do you, how do you keep a PG thirteen rating when you do that? Because it, it was like assault, basically. <laughs> it was it's, insane. And on top of that, the CGI interior of the 50s diner that this villain lives in with the golden circle, like... Poppy. Poppy, yeah, and like putting people in the meat grinder and all that shit. And everything about it was just a tremendous... Poor Elton. Yeah. That did bring us to Rocket Man. Forgot about that. That, that. that did kind of lead to Rocket Man. Which was fantastic and much maligned, uh, comparatively to... I would say uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. It should have gotten every award that Bohemian Rhapsody got. Uh, and then it led to the, this movie led to The King's Man, which also wasn't great. And then led us to, God damn it, what was the Bryce Dallas Howard one? Argyle. Uh, Argyle. God damn, Argyle was so bad, dude. That's a fun yeah, movie. Yeah, it's terrible. That's a, that's a so bad I, I laughed throughout the movie. The oil skating thing. That's so funny. Was so fucking stupid. I, I, that's where I like really lost it. Yeah, dude. It was- it was so stupid. I saw that and Madam Web within like three oh. days of each other. Do you, what, what movie do you think is better, Madam Web or Joker Two? Joker Two. Madam, Joker Madam, by a lot. By yeah, a lot. Yeah. Madam Web. Madam Web is not is barely a movie. I would say I would say uh, Joker Two as well, but only because at the very least Gaga and Phoenix are trying. Mm-hmm. And Dakota Dakota Edwards just did not want to be there. Dakota One Edwards. Or not, not Dakota Edwards. Uh, fucking Dakota Johnson. Dakota Edwards is the guy I played high school soccer with. Son of a bitch, he was very good. Went to Maryland. Um, but yeah, the uh, it was a rough one. Um, but so our lists are Gucci, you have American Psycho 2, Wonder Woman 84, Attack of the Clones, Amazing Spider-Man 2, and Pacific Rim 2. Jeff, you have Batman and Robin, Dumb and Dumber 2, Independence Day 2, Zoolander 2, and Wall Street 2. I have Highlander 2, Blues Brothers 2000, Son of the Mask, Space Jam 2, and Kingsman 2. Only ones I had on my list that I didn't mention was uh, like 
Jaws 2 sucked, but like no one saw that. Um, Jurassic Park 2, I think, is really bad, especially when you think comparatively to the original uh, yeah. Jurassic Park movie. I mean, every single, it's really just every Jurassic Park sequel. Yeah. The third one, I think, is better than the second one, though. The one with the birdcage? Yes. Yeah, that one is kind of yeah. fun. Uh, I don't love Hangover 2, um, at least comparatively to the original, but that's, no. I don't know, it's not like as big a drop-off as some of the other movies here. Uh, I don't know if you guys any others on your... No, one that I kept, I, I want to defend Anchorman 2, which is one that I saw on a lot of these lists. I kind of like Anchorman 2. Some funny scenes. There's some funny stuff in it. I, I wouldn't put it on this list because there are there is some funny things. Yeah, definitely got some less. Do you have any... Uh, um, Nutty professors to the clumps. Ooh. That was that and was then the port noise, basically, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. My my favorite um, bait and switch is GI Joe Retaliation when oh. they killed off Channing. Channing Tatum first five minutes of the movie. Same thing with fucking Golden Circle. He was just addicted to being killed off in the first five seconds. Yeah. God damn, yeah. dude. I saw a video of him recently. Um, some guy was teaching him, like a viral South African dance, and he taught Channing Tatum learned it within two two seconds. Yeah, yeah. he's so talented. <laughs> And you just forget he's like a legit, like very good dancer. Yeah, started as a stripper. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's our list. Uh, we'll be back next week with a new movie. Um, I think that we'll probably touch Saturday Night Live. We'll probably touch some other movies too. But uh, we'll be back next week.